Here we're given a number of integrations and we're asked to find, to evaluate these using the sifting property of the Dirac impulse function. So what is the sifting property? So remember we said the sifting property is the property where the integral of the product of any function x of t times some shifted impulse, so this is a, an impulse function that's shifted by a seconds, if you integrate that over all t, the result is a single value, a single sample of x of a. And a comes about by taking this value, the argument of the impulse, and equating it to zero because that's where the impulse will be non-zero. So this is the value that we're sampling at. So t equals a, and it's this a that goes into there. So this is the property that we'll be using. It's called the sifting property, or the sampling property. So if we look at the first integration, we have a product of an impulse function times cosine of t. So cosine of t, that's my x of t. So that's the value that's equal to 0. So the answer will be x of 0. And x, in this case, will be cosine. So it's cosine of 0, which is 1. So that's our first integration. So we simplified the integration. We ended up with a single value, and we got that by using this sifting property. Second example, again, we have some function, and we have a shifted impulse. So this is my x, and this is my impulse. So if you take the argument of the impulse, and you equate it to 0, so t minus pi equals 0, t equals pi. So that simplifies to x of pi. And the function x is cosine, so it's simply cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Now, if you don't get negative 1, it means your calculator isn't in radians. So you need to have the calculator in radians. Now, if, sometimes it's easy, you can calculate it without a calculator, but sometimes it isn't. So make sure your calculator is set to radians. OK, next example, very similar. What we want is that to be equal to 0. So t equals minus pi over 2. So the answer will be x of minus pi over 2. And x, in this case, is just cosine. So it's cosine of minus pi over 2. And that gives you 0. Next example, again, we're looking at the impulse function. So you want t equals 1. So we're looking at x of 1. Now, x is the function 3t squared plus 1. That's your x of t. So the answer will be 3 times 1 squared plus 1. Which is 4. Next question. Very similar. But this time, the impulse is centered at 0. So t equals 0. So your answer will be x of 0. 
x of 0 is going to be 3 times 0 squared minus 1. And that's just minus 1. So you see, they're all very similar. What we do is we notice, so important to notice that the limits of the integration have to include the impulse function. So here, this example is very similar to the previous example, but notice that the limits of the integration from minus 1 to 1. So you have 3t squared minus 1, which um, maybe looks something like this. And then you have an impulse centered at t equals 3. So that's your impulse at t equals 3. But we're only integrating from minus 1 to 1. So we're only integrating from here to here. So in this uh, interval, the Dirac function doesn't exist. It's never non-zero. So because our impulse here, t equals 3, is outside the limits of the integration, then the answer to the question is simply zero, because you're multiplying something by zero. So you, you have some function, and you're multiplying it by another function, which is your impulse, but you're only integrating, um, you're only integrating for this range, which is a range that doesn't include, this is your integration from minus 1 to 1, it doesn't include the impulse at t equals 3. So the answer is just 0. Next example is very similar. Here we have t equals 1. So we simply say the answer is x of 1. And x of 1 means this function when um, t equals 1. So it's 1 squared plus cosine pi. Cosine pi is minus 1. 1 and minus 1 is 0. So there we have 0. And for this final example, you have an impulse function here, t equals minus 1, but you also have this unit step. This unit step means that you're multiplying. So le let me show you what the, the signal will look like. You have some function, sorry, some function here, um, which exists for negative and positive time. You're multiplying it by a unit step that only exists for positive time. And you're multiplying that by a unit impulse at t equals minus 1. So when will, when will these three have a non-zero overlap? Nowhere, because the unit step is only positive for, it's only non-zero for t greater than zero, and the unit impulse is only non-zero for t equals minus one. 
So when you multiply the three, you actually end up with no overlap. So the total integration there is zero. So you see how very quickly, very simply, using this um, sifting property of the delta Dirac function or the Dirac delta function, we've managed to um, answer all these integrations. So that there is your final answer.